Good morning, YouTube. Did my radio show last night, as I always do on a Tuesday. Uh, a couple of you tuned in, so thank you very much for having a listen. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did forget about it, which I'm sure a few people would have done, um, you can catch it again, because uh, it is rebroadcast. Uh, so if you're listening again this Sunday uh, from 10pm UK time, 10 through till midnight, uh, you'll be able to hear the repeated show in case you missed it or missed anything. Uh, other than that, I'll be um, I'll be back on next Tuesday at the same time, eight till ten. I got a uh, an interesting message on my Facebook page last night, which involves the Benny Boy Biker book. It looks like it may be coming my way very soon, probably as early as the weekend. I won't say any more than that, but uh, keep an eye out. I might be getting the book, which uh, which is awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully it'll happen. There's a couple of things I forgot to mention on uh, my last video. About my, yeah, my one year on video. Is that a gap I could fit? Ooh, I could do, but it's wet. I'm not going to risk it. Just wait a few more seconds, and then there's a massive gap after the van. Yeah, a couple of things I forgot to mention. Uh, and that is... What is it? <laughs> I've forgotten again. No, it's... Um, there was a couple of... When I mentioned a couple of the people that had been subscribed to me early on, um, there was only a sort of couple of names I could... Uh, bring out at the top of my head at the time. Uh, but of course, there is plenty others um, that have been subscribed early on. Uh, from not just from the UK. Uh, so yeah, I did mean to say special thanks to uh, Bandit Nev and Big Kev. And uh, Captain Cranky, of course, which obviously I mentioned his uh, his music video challenge thing. So yeah, thanks to them guys. Uh, and many others. I mean, I, if there was a way of, um, well, there probably is, I just don't know it. If there's a way of uh, looking at your subscribers and uh, arranging them by order, of when they subscribed, that would be pretty good. Just to see, uh, see how far, yeah, see how far back you can go and uh, see who were the original subscribers. I could search back through my emails. I think I've kept a lot of the emails. Then again, I've probably deleted them. Know me? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, thanks to you guys. Um, I've also got a challenge planned. Yes, um, I've I've got to give it a test run. Or at least like record my attempt at the uh, at the challenge, and then I've just got to think of the uh, sort of rules and limitations, and we'll see how we'll see how it goes. Now, being as the last two challenges I've set, um, nobody's actually entered, so <laughs> this will be a good one. Maybe they just didn't like the prizes, so maybe this one will be uh, no prize. Watch this space, I will uh, keep you informed on that one. And now, I've got a funny story to tell you. True story about the police getting it wrong. This is when I used to live in, as previously mentioned, Earl Shilton, Leicestershire. I lived in a, a flat. It was an old corner shop uh, slash end terrace house which had then been converted into um, into separate flats now the landlord had put up some CCTV cameras around the outside of the building um, which uh, were mainly looking into the the backyard where he kept his caravan so yes yeah, uh, obviously for security purposes there anyway what happened was well the okay let's let me describe the area this is in um, the area, it's not a rough area. It's certainly not the nicest area of town, if there is, even is a nice area of Earl Shilton. Um, the, nearby, there was an old factory which had um, fairly recently been knocked down and converted into flats, which happens quite a lot. Um, I think, well, I think most towns have it now. Old factories get knocked down because they're not used anymore and uh, housing or flats get created. 
anyway yeah so the, yeah there's uh, new flats kind of over the road let's say and uh, them flats tended to house a little bit of the more ruffian variety scallywags whatever you want to call them now for a few weeks probably even months before this incident happened uh, there was the occasional smell of weed or you know something dodgy anyway cannabis perhaps yeah anyway there was a dodgy smell that uh, was occasionally apparent there uh, obviously some residents had picked up on this and someone had reported it to the police saying that there's a bit of a smell and of course where it was in close proximity uh, to the flat where I lived and because of the CCTV cameras when the police came to sort of have a look what's going on here should I foot forward anyway yeah when the police came to have a look obviously they, uh, they, they noticed the cameras on the outside of the building and uh, that kind of raised a flag with them because they thought okay you know if there's cameras there it could if there is uh, drug dealers inside they're going to be um, keeping an eye out for us via the cameras so that was one reason they had and another thing they must have done well because they uh, said it in their report based on the reasons why uh, this incident happened um, that they did have a listen through the letterbox of the main door and they could hear what they thought was some kind of equipment related to growing cannabis. So they thought they'd came across a cannabis factory of some sort. And what they could actually hear was the boiler. So the boiler was actually located uh, in a little utility area just behind the front door. So that's what they could actually hear, but obviously they, <laughs> they thought it was something else. And I don't know how long this was before the incident happened but they obviously uh, had enough uh, had enough reason to go off on that and went and got a, a warrant to search the property and typically they decide to do this on a Saturday night now at the time this is when I was still doing my radio show I used to do it on a Saturday night so they decided to turn up with a search warrant obviously because I was out and there was no answer at the door they were, uh, were then allowed to smash the door down uh, and go in and search the place so yeah they, they broke the door down they sent in the sniffer dogs and everything uh, and they uh, they had a search obviously straight away probably realized that they'd, they'd uh, cocked it up completely I was like this is not the factory we're looking for kind of situation uh, while this is happening uh, one of my neighbours who lives in one of the other flats has returned from work to obviously find the place surrounded by police and finds out what's going on obviously uh, finds out that the door's been knocked down uh, gets hold of the landlord so the landlord then turns up and I don't really know what was said I'm pretty sure there was uh, some heated words I'm sure I'm not aware of any of this going on until my landlord calls me um, yeah, my phone rings whilst I'm on air. Luckily, I, I, say, I had a song playing and I was able to answer. Um, yeah, my landlord explained to me, he said, well, what, what, what the words he said? He, something like, now don't panic when you get home, but your door's been boarded up. I was like, what? What's, what's going on? Uh, and he explained that the police have been round and obviously that they're, you know, searching for drugs or something so I'm like what well there's no way it's me <laughs> that sort of thing because it wasn't I'm not into that sort of stuff so yeah they completely get the wrong place so yeah I, I come back find the uh, the door all boarded up I could get in through another door anyway so it wasn't too much of an issue um, but also because this used to be a house 
at some point um, and it had been converted into flats. The, I lived in the upstairs one, there was two upstairs and they actually had a, a door linking the two together or what, what used to be a door um, which had obviously been uh, boarded up since and sealed up. Uh, obviously the police had seen this and they'd smashed through that door as well into my neighbour's flat and uh, yeah, they were all over it. Obviously it was nothing was ransacked in that sense, you know, they'd not like, you know, uh, overturned mattresses and uh, emptied drawers out and everything. I think it was only like a visual, a visual search. Mine, but once they got in, they probably realised straight away that, uh, yeah, this is no, uh, this is no Breaking Bad situation going on here. <laughs> no meth lab, no cannabis factory, we're all good. So yeah, the police had to obviously pay for a new door and the damage that was caused for their uh, mistaken identity. And to this day, I still don't know if they actually managed to find the place they were looking for. I mean, there was definitely something some, somewhere nearby, because, yeah, I'd, I've been smelling it before. And uh, it, I just couldn't quite pinpoint where it was coming from. Because sometimes it would be on, like, one side of the road, and sometimes you smell it on the other. And, yeah, it was a bit difficult to, uh, to pinpoint. But I'm sure if they had the, uh, the dogs out, the dogs would have found it. And one thing, one of the officers said, I think it was like the uh, the ranking officer on site at the time. It, um, he wouldn't apologise. He wouldn't apologise that they got it wrong. He said something along the lines of, "I'm not apologising because the information we've got and blah blah blah," which was um, a bit of a kick in the teeth, really. But uh, I eventually, after I've been obviously speaking to the police afterwards, because it was my my space that they'd uh, invaded, if you like. Uh, I did get a, an apology out of them eventually. So anyway, that's my true story of the police getting it wrong and me having to find out about it whilst doing a live radio show. <laughs> Which, by the way, uh, <laughs> as soon as I got off the phone and had to do a, a link, uh, I kind of explained a bit of the situation to the listeners. And of course, by that time, I wasn't really sure on what was going on. All I knew is that the police had knocked down the door of the wrong house. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, yeah, I gave Leicestershire police a bit of a slating on that one on air to about five people that were probably listening at the time. Yeah, it's funny looking back at it. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. Right safe, everybody. Stay out of trouble. Bye-bye.